Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome to IT Snippets. Today I'm going to show you how to set up Samba on a Raspberry Pi, but this will probably work for any Debian based operating system. So let's get started. The first thing we have to do is actually remote control our Pi. And because my Pi that I'm using for this is headless, I'm going to do it using the command line. So I will connect to it using SSH. To do that, right click my start bar, go to PowerShell as admin, select yes when user account control kicks in. And once that's come up, type SSH space pi, which is a username of the Raspberry Pi, or on the Raspberry Pi rather, at and then Raspberry Pi. Now if you've set an IP address or you've changed the host name of your Raspberry Pi, this will be different based on your installation and what you set up. It's asking me for the password. So if you're using a default password, it's Raspberry or whatever password you've previously set up. As you can see, I'm now logged into Pi, so what I'll do is I'll type clear to clear the screen. And then, as always, with any update that you're going to do and install new software, you make sure the software that's currently installed is up to date. So to do that, we do sudo apt get update. So that's super user do apt get, as in our application package manager, and update to check if there's any updates. Okay, now that that's done, we do sudo apt get upgrade. So the update actually refreshes the package list to the latest to make sure you're checking for against the latest versions and upgrade will actually upgrade anything that requires upgrading. In this case, it looks like there's an update for my Raspberry Pi EE prom. So I'm going to say yes and allow it to update that. Now that that's done, let's install Samba. So to make it easier, I will clear the screen again by typing clear and I'll do sudo apt get install samba then space samba dash common dash bin so i want to install the samba server and i want to install the samba common binaries i hit return on that hopefully it should find those packages which it has and it's asked me if i want to install them it's going to take an extra 101 meg of disk space but i'm okay with that so i'm going to press y and we'll wait for that to install okay so it's come up with some text on the screen that says Samba server and utilities. If your computer gets an IP information from a DHCP server in the network, the DHCP server may also provide information about Win services. NetBIOS name servers present on your network. This requires a change to your samba.config file so that the DHCP provided Win settings will automatically be read from var lib samba dhcp.conf. DHCP client package must be installed to take advantage of this feature. Do you wish to modify smb.conf to use win settings from your DHCP? I'm going to say yes, although I believe I've actually set these up manually anyway on a previous tutorial, so hopefully that won't hurt us. Okay, now that's been done, I'll type clear again to clear the screen. And we have to create a new folder in order to actually share. So in this one, I'm going to create it in the root of my SD card and I'm going to call it share. I'm going to set the permissions and I would recommend that you set them differently later on, but I'm going to do a separate tutorial on securing Raspberry Pis. But I'm going to set it to 777, which means that it will be full read, write and execute for everyone. And I'm also going to set the sticky bit to one which will stop it from being deleted. So in order to do that, you do sudo mkdir space dash m space 1777 space slash share. So that's super user do space mkdir make dir space dash m space 1777. So that's the one sticky bit I was telling you about. 777 for full read write execute for everyone. And space then the folder slash share. If I hit return, that should now create a folder in my root directory called share, which as you can see it does, and that folder will currently be empty. So this is going to be the folder that's going to be made available on our network that we'll have read, write, and execute access to. So like most things in Linux, it's not quite as straightforward as just installing the application and creating the folder. We'll have to point the Samba config file to that. So in order to do this, you do sudo space, and then nano, which is a text editor, and then slash etc slash samba slash smb dot conf. 
if I hit return, this will open up a Samba configuration file. And what we want to do here is there's a lot of things that you can you can actually tweak, but we're just interested in creating a new section down the bottom based on as what you can see here it gives you examples for printers. We're just going to go right down to the bottom and then we're going to do square bracket pair square bracket comment equals now this will be a description of the folder so we'll call it my shared folder the path so we said we're going to set that to slash share it helps us spell it correctly i'm going to capitalize these just because linux can be a bit of a nightmare for that so we'll then add a browsable space equals yes that means that we can browse it writable equals yes only guest equals no means that we don't allow just guests onto it so normal users can log on to it as well in other words it's not just limited to guests the create mask equals 0777 so when we created the folder you remember we created it with 1777 the one being so we couldn't delete it we're basically saying do the same thing here so make it read write and executable to everyone and the directory mask is the same 0777 public equals yes because we want it to be browsable by the public guest okay equals yes means that we want guests or people who are basically not logged in the system on either side to be able to see the folder so hopefully i've done that correctly i can do Control x and say yes to save it and then hit return so now we have to allow our raspberry pi user the user that we used to log in we have to set the password for that so in order to do that we do sudo so super user do space smb obviously for samba pass wd password so smb pass wd space dash a space pi so dash a is add if i return it should ask me for a password enter the password and hit return and then insert again to confirm it and hit return so as you can see it now said added the user pi so the user pi is now a member of the samba group now in order for those changes to take effect we need to reset the samba service so we can do that using super user do so sudo space slash etc slash init dot d slash samba space and restart so we're saying super user do the samba service and to restart it so if i hit return okay so as you can see the samba file isn't there but that's me being old school most of the stuff that you restart is inside in d Another way you can restart a service in Linux is by doing super user do systemctl system control space restart and the samba daemon is called smbd and as you can see smbd is there so it's just been renamed slightly in the newer versions of Debian so if I hit return that should restart it and if I actually go up and do this and change that to sm BD. that may actually work which it does okay so i just had the command slightly wrong there because they've changed its name from previous versions now that samba has been restarted just to be in the safe side i'm going to restart the pi by typing reboot and we'll give it a moment to reboot oh sorry i need to do sudo reboot and give it a moment to reboot and then we shall see if we can find it on our network Okay, hopefully that's enough time has passed that we'll be able to reconnect our Pi. So I will CLS to clear the screen and then I'll try connecting again using SSH Pi at Raspberry Pi. I will enter my password. So let's see if we can find the Raspberry Pi in our network. We should be able to do slash slash raspberry pi slash. And there we go, there's a shared folder. If I double click it. I can see there's nothing inside it. If I do a right click and do new, set text document, I'll call it blue.txt. I go back in here and I change to the root directory, change to the shared folder, and I do ls, we should now have blue.txt. And if I do nano blue.txt, I'll enter hello, I'll do control x and y and then hit return. Now if I go back in here and I open boo.txt, you can see it says hello. If you like this video, give it a like. If you dislike this video, give it a dislike too. If you get feedback in this or any other videos or suggestions for videos you believe we should do in the future, then please let us know in the comments below. And most of all, thank you for watching.